Okay, so let's just talk back through kind of where we ended up yesterday with our unit circle. We put our, tri our special right triangles on here so that we could see how they worked on the unit circle, right? So when we have this 30 degree angle, which is really pi sixths, then we can take our measurements and get our ordered pairs. Same for this 45, 45, 90 triangle, and I did not write that. What is 45 in radians? Pi over 4, so write that next to your little 45. And then 60, we did write it, but I wrote it over my tape, and my pen doesn't really want to write over tape. So there we go. If you got the first quadrant down, then you can get the rest of the circle, just understanding how, what the relationships are between them. Then what we looked at was that sine, we know how to find sine, because we know right triangle trigonometry, right? It is opposite over hypotenuse. Sorry, trying to zoom in here. Opposite over hypotenuse, so when you look at the triangles, what that ends up being is, here we get opposite over hypotenuse, so that is your y value, and your hypotenuse on a unit circle is 1, right? And that means that your sine value is really just your y value. Then cosine, that's, since that's adjacent over hypotenuse, that's going to be your x value. So down here on the bottom right, because I don't think we wrote this. That means your ordered pairs when you're looking on a unit circle are cosine theta, sine theta. And it's in alphabetical order just like x and y is. Does that helps you any? When you are looking at what is going on in the first quadrant up here, Hopefully the fact that 45 has the x and the y values the same makes sense since it's an isosceles right triangle that you can get there. And so then just remembering that these two values here are the same, but the x and y values change places. Why do you think that that's all that happens, x and y changing places? How does this triangle here compare to this triangle, the green and the yellow? Okay, it does increase, so that's going to be an important thing we're going to look at. Are they the same kinds of triangles? What kind of triangle is this? What do we call this one? First special right triangle, what do you call it? It's a, what's this? 30, 60, 90. What's this? The yellow one. 30, 60, 90, right? Are they both 30, 60, 90 triangles? Yes. So what changes is whether we're using the 30 degree angle or the 60 degree angle. So when you do your trig, what changes is the opposite in the hypotenuse, right? And the only difference between sine and cosine is the numerator, because the denominator is the hypotenuse in both. But what, which side is the adjacent and which side is the opposite is what changes places. And so that's why your x and your y values here just change places, okay? Now remembering which is which should be pretty easy when you think about values here. Um, because things do increase, right? You have to think about what increases. When you're looking at your ordered pairs right here for this triangle, your x value has to be greater than your y value, and that's what's happening here. And then on this one, your x value has to be less than your y value. Does that make sense? All right, so then we looked at tangent. We drew in this tangent line. And then I think at the end, talked about the fact that this big triangle here and this little triangle here that we get are similar triangles, right? And if they are similar triangles, then they are proportional. Would you agree with that? Yes? Okay, so if I set up a proportion, I can say that and when you do trig proportions, remember that you are doing, um, you're comparing two sides of the same triangle instead of comparing sides of triangles to each other. But if I put this leg of the triangle the purple one right here, AB, over this leg of the big triangle. What, what is the length of this right here? All the way to here? One, right? So I'm going to put AB over one. So the length of AB over one. That has to be equal to, since they are similar, this same leg, right? Because AB corresponds to the sine of theta over this leg, which is cosine theta. And we already found that the tangent of theta is equal to AB over 1, and so that tells you again that the tangent of theta 
has to equal sine theta over cosine theta. So we found that a couple of different ways, from similar triangles, because all of this relates back to similar triangles, and from just knowing what tangent of theta is, that it's opposite over adjacent, and that makes your y over your x, which is sine over cosine. Okay? Everybody good with that? So your sine value is what? Your x or your y? Y. And cosine is your x, okay? And then tangent is your y over x, right? Or your sine over your cosine. Everybody okay on that so far? We good? All right, so like I said yesterday, this thing, this thing, this unit circle is a thing of beauty. We've got special right triangles. We've got trig. You can see how all that relates to each other. There are other lines, line segments on this triangle because we talked about secant, cosecant, and cotangent. I'm going to show you. We're not going to draw them all in this triangle because I think it's a little too much, but um, I want to show you this. Cool. Okay, this is what was on my shirt yesterday that we didn't get to, so we didn't talk about it. But if you look at this triangle right here, right, that's the triangles basically that we had. So your x value is your sine value. I'm sorry, it's your cosine value, goodness. Your cosine value, that's your x value. Your sine value is your y value, and so that's how we would get to this ordered pair. We drew in that tangent line. See how this red segment is tangent to that circle, right? And that length, once you continue this ray on, from here down to that point right there, that is the tangent of theta, right? Here is the secant. It goes from here to here. Remember, we talked about secant lines. A secant line or a circle intersects how many times? What are your options? How many times could you possibly intersect a circle? Two or one, and that's tangent, right? So the secant line, right? The secant line intersects it twice. We only have one right here, but if it keeps going. And then your co if you continue this ray on and you make a triangle going to that point right there, this value now is 1. Here's your cotangent value, and here is your cosecant value. So they are all actual values on that. You understanding this and knowing how to pick these off the picture aren't quite as important at this point, but they are all related to something. None of them are random values that somebody just made up, right? Nobody makes up math. We discover how, it, how it's related. Okay, so don't necessarily have to memorize this right now, but it is good to have kind of an understanding of what's going on. All right, so let's look at the next set of notes that I gave you. And keep your unit circle handy because we are going to use that. Let me go grab something off my desk. Okay, and this is going on 10, or what page is it? 101. This is going on page 101 where we're at. So we're going to look at the trig ratios and how they're defined, right? We've got cosine and secant. We talked briefly about this the other day, about how cosine and secant are recipro reciprocals. Sine and cosecant are reciprocals. Tangent and cosecant. Oh, that is not right. What's wrong with what I have up there? Look, look at those. Tangent and cosecant, are they reciprocals? No. What is tangent a reciprocal of? Cotangent. My goodness gracious. Cotangent. There we go. Y'all stop me if anything else looks weird. All right, so we're going to draw in a radius here. We're going to make ourselves a little right triangle. And this kind of goes along with Zeke's question yesterday. Remember when we said the sine value is your x value, the cosine, oh my god, I said it again, the cosine value is your x value, the sine is your y value. I really do know this stuff. I don't, my brain is just like scrambled eggs right now. Um, but whether we're talking sine or cosine on this picture, if I am looking for the ordered pair of that point right there, this is my x value, this is my y value, this represents the radius of the circle. Okay. So right now we're talking any circle not just a unit circle. So for any circle, cosine, when we're looking at this angle, this is our theta, cosine is always adjacent over hypotenuse, so this is x over r. Does that make sense to you? So what would the secant ratio look like? r over x. 
sine from SOHCAHTOA is always what? Do we need to write SOHCAHTOA up here? Remember, it doesn't help you if you don't spell it right. S-O-H-C-A-H-T-O-A. -A -A so sine is what over what in general from here? Opposite over hypotenuse. So it is there, my opposite is Y. My hypotenuse is R. <clears throat> so what's cosecant going to look like? R over Y. <clears throat> Tangent, opposite over adjacent, so Y over X. So cotangent is X over Y. Everybody good with that? Just if you can understand this, you can see how it all relates to this triangle here. Now, same kind of thing, but this time we have a unit circle, which is what we focus on the most. So we're going to draw in a little right triangle again. One, X, and Y. So this time, the hypotenuse is still our radius, but since it's a unit circle, the radius is one, which means the cosine, when I do adjacent over hypotenuse, I'm going to have X over one. So what is that? x, which means your secant theta would be what? 1 over x. <clears throat> Sine theta would be what? Just y. Cosecant would be 1 over y. Tangent is what? y over x which means cotangent is x over y. So if you can tell me what the tangent of pi thirds is, you should be able to tell me what the cotangent of pi thirds is real easily. All right? They don't always look like reciprocals, sometimes just because you have to rationalize the denominator somewhere, but all it is is the reciprocal. We good? Yes. All right. So let's talk about sines in the quadrants. If I have, first of all, remember that your ordered pairs are cosine theta, sine theta, right? Now, just in general, any ordered pair that you find in quadrant one is positive, positive. You agree with that? In quadrant two, what is it? negative, positive. In quadrant three, negative, negative. And in quadrant four, positive, negative. Right? Now, because my ordered pairs are all cosine, sine, you can think of, well, that means cosine and sine are both positive. In this one, cosine's negative, sine's positive. In this one, cosine's negative, sine's negative. Cosine's positive, Sine's negative. Okay. So in quadrant one, all trig ratios are positive. Right? If cosine is positive, what does secant have to be? Positive, because all it is is the reciprocal, right? So if cosine and secant go together, if cosine is positive, secant has to be. They're exactly the same as far as sine goes. Then if sine is positive, then what else has to be positive? Cosecant, and then tangent, and then what would be... Um, cotangent. So let's look at tangent, because we can tell sine and cosine and all that from here. But here, remember, tangent of theta is y over x. So here, tangent is positive over positive, right? So tangent would be what? Positive. Here, tangent would be positive over negative, which makes it negative. Here, it would be negative over negative, which makes it positive. And here it would be negative over positive, which would make it negative, okay? So in quadrant one, all trig ratios are positive. In quadrant two, we can tell from this little chart here that sine theta is positive. Is tangent going to be positive in quadrant two? No, because remember it is y over x, so it would be positive over negative. But if sine theta is positive, what else has to be positive? Cosecant. And how do we abbreviate cosecant? CSC. So cosecant. 
quadrant three, sine and cosine are both negative, but what is positive in quadrant three? Tangent, because you put negative over negative. So tangent theta, and what else then? Cotangent. And then in quadrant four, what do we know for sure by looking at our little ordered cosine? And then we know sine's negative, and if those are different, then tangent has to be negative. So cosine and then what is positive? Secant. So once you know your first quadrant, you have to understand the signs from the rest to be able to get the other stuff out of it. But this little stuff I wrote in purple here, you know, you've known that forever when you're graphing. The way a little um, kind of mnemonic to remember this looks like this. Okay. So here, all of them are positive. So this is all. Okay. And then students take calculus. Students, so S, that means it's just sine and it's reciprocal. Here, tangent. Oh my gosh, let's not try tangent. Take calculus. Okay. So all of them are positive, just the sine and it's reciprocal, just tangent and it's reciprocal, just cosine and it's reciprocal. So here's how you can remember it. Okay, here's what's happening and why, but here's how you can remember what's positive where. We good? All right? Okay. Next page. So our quadrantal angle values. It's quadrantal angle value. You remember that? What does it mean if it's a quadrantal angle? It's on the axis, okay? And so here, my ordered pair, we had a really hard time with this the last two days. One, zero. All right, we got it this time. Good job. One, zero. That means this is zero, one. This is negative one, zero. And this is zero, negative one, right? So for a unit circle, we know that we have x equals cosine of theta, y equals the sine of theta. Tangent of theta, that is sine theta over cosine theta, which means that is equal to y over x. then what is secant theta? 1 over x. What is cosecant theta? Oh, 1 over y. And then cotangent theta is x over y, or cosine over sine. So when I go to find the sine of 90, right, go to 90 degrees, what is the sine of 90? Here's my 90 degrees, right? And here's where I rotate to. What's the order of here right here? 0, 1. Do I have to do any work? What, what represents the sine in my ordered pair? The y value. So what's the sine of 90? 1. See how that works? Remember, we just pull it right off those ordered pairs. So cosine of 3 pi over 2. All right, well, this is 0. This is pi. Remember, this is pi halves. Where's 3 pi over 2? Down here, right? Okay, so this is my angle. This ordered pair is... Y'all got me all messed up on these numbers. Zero, negative one. So what's the cosine value? Zero, right? You just pull the x value off. Tangent of pi. Here's pi. 
right there. What's this ordered pair? Negative 1, 0. Is tangent x over y or y over x? y over x. So that's going to give me 0 over negative 1. What is that? 0. Secant of 270, okay, so that's here. That means that is 1 over what? What is secant the reciprocal of? Secant is the reciprocal of cosine, yes? What's the cosine value here? 0, so this is 1 over 0, and what is that? Undefined, and I don't have a lot of room to write that here. Undefined. Okay. Everybody okay with that? Cosecant is the reciprocal of what? That is going to be 1 over the sine of negative 3 pi over 2. Yes? Negative 3 pi over 2 is going to rotate to here. My ordered pair is 0, 1. So what's the sine of this? One. What's the reciprocal of that? What's the reciprocal of one? Y'all are making this stuff way too hard. One. The answer's one. These are quadrantal angles. You are just pulling them straight out of that ordered pair. Maybe you have to make it a reciprocal. Maybe it's just that answer there. We okay with that? The answers come from those ordered pairs. Okay. The other special angles come from the reference angles. Okay, so 60 degrees in radians is what? Pi thirds, right? What is 45? Pi over 4. Okay, 30 is pi 6. Okay, so we know 45, that's the easy one, right? Square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2. These other two have, the two pieces are one half and what? What's the other one? One of the, one of these is one half, the other one has to be square root of three over two, right? When you're at 30 degrees, what's greater, x or y? x. So this is square root of three over two, and this is one half, which means this is one half, and this is square root of three over two. Everybody good with all that so far? Okay, so now we look at this. We're using the reference angle. Oh, and by the way, reference angle, we usually use alpha. It's like a <coughs> bloated Jesus fish. Kind of what it looks like. So cosine of 5 sixths. So the first thing you want to think about is what quadrant would 5 sixths be in? Second quadrant, right? So you don't have to graph it, but it does help to kind of have a little idea of what's going on. So it's in the second quadrant somewhere. You want the reference angle. So if I go to 5 pi over 6 here, I want to know what this reference angle is, right? So what's my reference angle? Pi over 6, okay? So my reference angle is alpha. It is pi 6. So what is the cosine of pi sixths? No calculations here. Look at this. What is the cosine of pi sixths? Square root of 3 over 2. So that's equal to square root of 3 over 2. Now, that's not necessarily my final answer, right? i got to think about what's happening. We are in quadrant 2. So in quadrant 2, is cosine positive or negative? It is negative, right? So since it is negative, this is the cosine of pi 6, but this is a quadrant 1 answer. So once I get that, this is in quadrant 2. Cosine is negative, so my answer is negative square root of 3 over 2. You see how that works? 
Think about what quadrant you're in, figure out what the reference angle is, bam, you only have a few things to choose from over there if it's not a quadrantal angle, and you move on from there. We good? All right, tangent of 315, what quadrant are we in? Fourth, okay, so we're in the fourth quadrant. We're over here somewhere. All right, I need my reference angle. So alpha is equal to what? 45 degrees, so I agree with that? Yes? So the tangent of 45 is what? How do you find the tangent of something? It's y over x. It's sine over cosine. This is my sine value, square root of 2 over 2. This is my cosine value, square root of 2 over 2. What is the tangent of 45? 1. In the fourth quadrant, is tangent positive or negative? Negative. Remember, the positive ones are all students take calculus. So tangent is only positive in these two quadrants right here. So it is negative. Your answer is negative 1. All right, so the bell is going to ring. And um, don't have time to get through any more of the examples right now. I'm going to give you, okay, all oh dang. All right, so I'm going to give you this salmon one. This one for sure y'all need because either you're asleep or I don't know what. I'm going to give you the green one. I want you to try it. We are going to, we will do the rest of these examples on Monday because I clearly need to talk through some more of this with y'all. But I'm giving it to you. You do not have to complete the green one. We'll complete it on Monday and get it taken care of. Okay, but the salmon one, you absolutely need to do. Do it before Monday, even though that probably isn't what the due date says. Sorry, sorry, sorry.